everybody, what's up? Welcome back to What the F*** News. Ah, holy sh does it feel good to say that again? Hey, you know, it's great you're excited, but can you maybe, you know, tone down the cussing? <laughs> no! Okay. God, it honestly feels so weird to be in front of this white sheet again. How I've missed you, white sheet. Like, I'm nervous, I'll just completely forget how to do this, like... Is this right? Help! Like, what if I pull a Ricky Bobby and just forget what to do with my hands? Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, welcome back to What the F*** News. Uh, today we're gonna- Oh, even worse, what if I pull a Gordon Ramsay and talk too much with my hands? Here are today's top stories. A nun brought a crossbow into a nursery. Sorry, I'm clearly overthinking, which is one of the things I do best, actually. I rehearse what I'm gonna say to a grocery store employee before I get to the front of a line. Hey, did you find everything you're looking for? I'm great, how are you? Nope, that's not right. But seriously, guys, I am beyond excited to be back making this show once again. I know I've been uploading a lot of other videos recently, but I'll always have a special place in my heart when it comes to the show, as a lot of you guys hopefully do as well. Plus, with all the just negative, awful news we'll inevitably have to talk about on this show, just filled with misery beyond your wildest comprehension, it's important to highlight the positive things in life, you know? And what the fuck news coming back to me is one of those things. So let's hear it for the return of what the fuck news. Yeah! Woo! Yeah! All right! You're still the monetized. You really couldn't let me be happy for one second, could you? No. But my name is Destry, and we now have a budget for this show. Yeah, you know, I just really wanted to upgrade this show so it has everything a successful new show might have. Like a new intro, better writing, a green screen background, so many news overlays it hurts your eyes a little bit, a studio audience, right guys? Yeah! Or how about musical guests? You know, get Jared Threaten in here to sing Special interviews with Jillian from Jilly Juice, followed by Gwyneth Paltrow, where the two have to fight to the death just to be able to leave the studio. A camera so HD you can see the dryness of my lips. And network speed so fast you'll still be able to play it back seamlessly without any buff. What did I say? No buffering. Get that shit out of here. That's right. And since it's been so long since the last one of these, I was actually able to save up quite a bit for the budget. Actually, how long has it been? Negative 1,731 days. That, that, that can't be right. It's not. That's your bank balance. Oh. Oh. Oh, no. Okay, so we may not be able to afford everything I wanted for this show, but we do still have 38 whole smackaroonies going into it, which I've decided to spend on the following. $10 on transitions. Wow. A $25 overdraft fee. $10 on this new intro. Oh god. That's horrible. A $25 overdraft fee. $5 on a studio audience. Say hello guys. Yeah! Woo! <laughs> What? Where's the rest of you guys? Oh, you only paid $5, so you just get me. Hi, I'm Terry. Uh, uh, okay. Another $25 overdraft fee? Really? And finally, $13 on my new writer, Kenneth, who I found on Craigslist and was the only guy who didn't send a dick pic in with his resume. But yes, Kenneth, who wrote the following joke. What do you call a fly without wings? A walk. Seriously, that's the worst fucking joke. <laughs> oh, how funny. A walk. Oh, you know what's extra great about that joke is that it's clean and friendly for the whole family. <laughs> yeah! Woo! Terry, come on, man. But before getting the news, guys, and as an attempt to offset my wildly crippling debt, this video has been once again wonderfully, graciously sponsored by Adam and Eve, who, if you don't know, is the name in sex toys as well as lubes and lingeries for both men and women and can be shipped all over the world. Now look, let's talk informally while I do a slow spin around. Hey, everyone's got urges. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking to my teenage son. <laughs> Listen up, champ. Everyone's got urges. So no matter what you're into, you could bet that Adam and Eve has something that tickles your fancy or any other place that you want to be tickled in, I guess. And while normally I would show you some cool product that they sent to demonstrate that fact, I think they realized that I have an entire chest of sex toys and they were just like, yeah, no, no, no more. But they got things that vibrate. They got things that twist. They got things that jump. They got things that can do backflips. I, I can't do backflips. And that's why no one likes you. But no matter what it is, Adam and Eve's unbeatable quality and customer service ensures that you get exactly what you want guaranteed. So whether it's for you, your partner, your friend, or you but just on the other side of the camera. Wow, Destry, that feels so good. You clearly know what you're doing. So what are you waiting for? Check out all that they have over at adamneve.com and when you love it, make sure to use code SMITH at checkout for 50% off one item and free shipping in the US and Canada. And to start the news off today, guys, we did it. After three long years, we have effectively beat COVID-19. Thanks, Terry. Wow, guys, I knew that we could work together as a society and find a way to, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 
Ah, I couldn't even finish that sentence. But yes, COVID still very much a thing as we now round year three of this pandemic with seemingly no end in sight. But I mean, if we were to compare to the numbers last year, surely they can't be worse, right? They are worse. And don't call me Shirley. Speaking strictly from a numbers standpoint, the COVID-19 virus had its worst day on January 19th this year, where an estimated 4,247,000 new cases were reported in a single day, which to put into perspective is seven times worse than it was a year ago at 589,000. I remember saying in a what the fuck news video in 2020, don't give us the DLC of COVID-19 COVID-20 Deluxe Edition. Turns out we not only got the DLC for COVID-19, we got COVID-22 Ultimate, the definitive edition remastered in HD. And you know, obviously a huge part of that is the new variants of the disease making it more transmissible than ever. But I just gotta ask, who the fuck is out here naming these things, man? We got the Delta Sky Miles variant and also the Omicron variant. What the fuck is that? Sounds like a fucking transformer. <laughs> Like, I want to be the guy that just names disease variants. Could that just be my job? Watch out! The next COVID variant. The booba variant. The mommy milker variant. Oh, no, 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 no. I got it. We call it the Democrat variant. You know, that way all the Republicans are just like, Oh, oh my God, I cannot get the Democrat variant. Please, God, I will wear a mask. I will get vaccinated. I just do not want the Democrat variant no matter what. Or just like call it the stinky wiener variant. Ha ha, you got the stinky wiener variant. <laughs> my wiener isn't stinky. That's just the name of the disease. Yeah, okay, buddy. Son of a bitch. I don't know if you're looking to hire over there, CDC, but I could go on all day. So yes, much to the chagrin of me in 2020, we did not, in fact, hashtag fist the coronavirus. If anything, it fisted us. And that just sucks, because I didn't imagine my first time being fisted to be from a deadly virus. Wait, you've imagined being fisted? Well, Billy from Stranger Things exists, right? Does that answer your question? So yeah, needless to say, COVID is not going anywhere anytime soon. And honestly, it's at the point now where it feels like at least someone you know has gotten it. Because I remember in the beginning of this, like it kind of felt rare for someone to have it, you know? But now, yeah. Like my girlfriend had COVID and I was so afraid that I was gonna get it that I banished her to the garage and fed her under the door. No, you have another three hours and then you get another Luna bar. And even with a lot of us, but not nearly enough, taking every necessary precaution to stop the spread of this thing, you know, wearing masks, getting vaccinated, uh, social distancing, all that shit. As unfortunate as it is, and with me dodging all these variants like an agent from the Matrix, you can't get me, bitch. Omicron finally pulled the Trinity and really said, dodge this. Because as of last week, I have COVID-19. <gasps> I know. Uh, so far, haven't really had any symptoms, you know, I don't think there's anything- <laughs> I'm just kidding. I actually feel pretty great besides it hurting when I pee, but that's that's just normal everyday stuff for me, so nothing really different. You can just call me asymptomatic as hell! But since both me and my girlfriend had it, uh, I tried to tell her that she can come back into the house, you know, but I, I think she just kind of prefers living in there now. Uh, baby? You know you can come back in the house, right? Oh my god. <laughs> And look, at this point, I'm more than aware you're sick of hearing about this topic. I'm sick of talking about it. But it also can't really be avoided when news stories pop up daily of just the stupidest people treating this pandemic like it hasn't been a thing for the last three fucking years. Wait, what? I have to wear a mask in this crowded mall? Why ever for? Like, I cannot believe that this is still a conversation we're having three fucking years later. But yes, the biggest offenders of this are the legions of people still opposed to the mask mandates being enforced in several businesses nationwide. As several people are choosing to voice their opinions of anti-mask and anti-vax beliefs at protests and school board meetings across the country. And I must warn you, a lot of what you're about to see is just the worst. I got a quick question for you guys. Do you hear the people sing? Singing the song of angry men. It is the music of a people who will not be slaves again. Hey, that was off the cuff. I don't even plan to do that. I don't even sing. These are demonic entities in all the school boards of all the United States of America. Maybe the reason why we have people in the hospitals all this mask wearing. Did we ever think of that? Did we ever think of that? Will not comply. Will not comply. I won't wear a useless mask. I don't need to stay at home. I want to talk about the real pandemic. Child sex trafficking. We will find you and we know you will who never you are. be allowed in we public again. They will be asked, how many vaccines have you had? Have you been a good little Nazi? Hey, Fauci! They don't care about your children. As a matter of fact, they hate them. They hate your kids. They hate my kids. They hate your kids. They hate my kids. Get it? <laughs> 
99.9 live through this flu, especially the kids, and the data proves that too. Make my dreams come true. What the fuck did I just watch? If I didn't know any better, I would have thought those videos were clips from a Parks and Rec episode. If sugar is so bad, how come Jesus made it taste so good? But isn't all food bad for you? I've been eating lasagna and muffins every day of my life for 40 years and I feel terrible. God, I don't know how these people just sit up here and take it. Like, I'm watching this and my anxiety is through the roof. In times like these, I like to try to remind myself that at least I'm not like my man Chef Gusto from Ratatouille. Gusto be like, gets criticized once, fucking dies. And there's honestly so many of these that playing all of them would take hours, but probably my favorite is the lady that says, And let me tell you something. Go home tonight and take one of these spoons and put it on your vaccination spot. Guess what? It's going to stick to you. What? You're telling me that if you're vaccinated, you have magnetic powers? And I'm just now finding this out now? Hold on. Oh my god, she's right. <laughs> but seriously, what the fuck is she talking about? And I know while some of you guys might argue that a lot of those clips happened last year, in recent news, a woman was shown on video threatening a school board by claiming that she was going to bring an entire arsenal of loaded guns if they didn't change the mask policy. My children will not come to school on Monday with a mask on. That's not happening. And I will bring every single gun loaded and ready to, I, I will call every- okay, that's three minutes. Jesus, lady. All this because your child has to wear the thinnest piece of fabric over their mouth and nose? Like what fucking masks are people putting on that they feel this passionate to speak out against them? You need to change your policy immediately because every time I put on this mask, I spin around the room uncontrollably and then I stop and say, smoking. You know, I gotta be completely frank here. I am not a fan of this mask policy because one time one of these masks jumped up on my face and I went completely catatonic and I woke up several hours later and alien burst out of my chest. And I won't lie, I hurt pretty friggin' bad. Sir, that is not a mask. Where did you get that thing? Like, I'm beginning to think there's something medically wrong with these people because they act like the second they put on a mask, it's gonna be like, man, would you please put on your mask? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 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 God save me! Well, at least as far as this lady goes, it was clearly an empty threat, right? Like, she was probably kidding. I mean, there's no way she has a real arsenal of weapons or, you know, any ever. Oh. Well, in a shocking twist of a development, the lady in the video, 42-year-old Amelia King, who looks like the type of person that would call the police if any person of color was shown on her Ring doorbell app, <laughs> Hold on, I'm not done. 42-year-old Amelia King, who looks like the type of person that would say, Gerald, don't touch me there, our sex night is next Thursday, was actually arrested and charged for making a verbal threat on school property, but later released on a $5,000 bail. Which, was it worth it? I don't know, the way I like to think about mask policies is like house rules, you know? Like if someone says, hey, don't come in my house while you're wearing shoes, you're gonna be like, oh, okay, yeah, no problem. You're not gonna throw a fit and be like, oh, uh, actually, it's my right to wear shoes in your house? Like, I feel like if I had a business and people didn't wear masks, I wouldn't just kick them out. I'd be like, I don't refuse to wear a mask! Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> what are you doing? What is this? Oompa Loompa Whoopity Wask We're kicking you out cause you won't wear a mask. What do you get when you just won't comply? Me shoving a fork in your fucking eye. Ah! What the fuck? Ow! That's right, any person that doesn't wear a mask in my house is getting a fucking Oompa Loompa song. Now I just have to travel to Loompa Land to get some more of those suckers. Hopefully all the snozz wankers haven't got them. And I wish I could say I'm surprised about how many people are still pissed about wearing masks, but then I remember this is 2022 where people would rather inject themselves with bleach and horse paste than to do anything that's found to be scientifically helpful in a global pandemic. Like a ton of companies have even gone as far as to offer incentives to anyone who would get vaccinated. Adults over 21 getting their first vaccine in the month of May get a free beer. Could soon be rolling up a free joint. We're going to give five custom hunting rifles. Inmates in Massachusetts prisons who received the coronavirus vaccine can get one week taken off their sentences. Donuts from Krispy Kreme, Shake Shack fries in New York City. You just think of this when you think of vaccination. Mm. My question with this is, do you really think this convinced anyone to get a vaccine? You really think people were like, yeah, I wasn't gonna get it, but then I saw that you can get a single hot dog from my local bar, and I was like, ooh, yeah. Yeah, I got it, because uh, some lady named Gwyneth Paltruvius is uh, giving away a free candle to anyone who gets vaccinated. Please, for the love of God, 
No. But as of now, according to most recent numbers, over 52% of the worldwide population is fully vaccinated, which includes 64% of the population in the United States. And when it comes to vaccines, I feel like that's a conversation I'm a little bit more understanding on, you know? Like it's your body, you choose whether you want to get it or not. But I feel like at this point, if you were going to get the vaccine, you already have it. Like, I don't think there's anything you could offer people to convince them to want to go get it. Well, hold on there, Destry, because apparently a brothel in Vienna is giving you 30 minutes with a lady of your choice if you choose to get vaccinated there. Come for the vaccine, stay for a little something extra. A Vienna brothel is providing COVID-19 vaccinations and giving those who take up the offer a 30-minute session with a, quote, lady of their choice if they get the vaccine at the on-site clinic. Ah, oh. huh, I just realized I don't have my booster yet. Where, where, where do I sign up? Sir, this is your seventh booster shot. We legally cannot give you any more. What? What are you talking about? Your arm is starting to look like Popeyes, dude. Oh, that, that just looks like that all the time. Don't worry about it. Gosh, a whole 30 minutes with a woman of your choice? Can I come back? and use the rest of my 29 minutes and 30 seconds anytime I want, or? Uh, what's the policy on crying? Would that cut into my time? What, during the injection? No, 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 before, during, and after the sex. Mostly during. <laughs> And although the exact numbers can't be verified, it would appear as though this tactic did in fact work, as an estimated 150 people lined up to get vaccinated on a single day alone. What the fuck? How do any of these women even have a vagina anymore? Can you fix it, doctor? Maybe. I'm no miracle worker, but nothing in my extensive research has encountered anything like this before. Still though, let's take a look. Do you mind uh, lifting it off the ground? Oh, sure. Hmm, yeah, I'm afraid there's nothing I can do without some spelunking gear. Can I at least return to work? Oh! Yeah, I wouldn't. And while that may have been enough to convince some people to get the vaccine, other people have held out for a completely different reason, as some anti-vax activists believe that drinking their own pee is the cure to coronavirus. The antidote that we've seen now, and we have tons and tons of research, is urine therapy. <sighs> you know, I'm just gonna hope that no one actually follows this guy or believes anything he says because what the fuck? Actually, you know what? If these people want to believe that, I say go for it. It'll just be great when they're out in public and it's like, <laughs> look at all these vaccinated idiots. You guys all look so stupid. <sighs> But the man in the video, a prominent anti-vax leader named Christopher Keyes, goes on to say that urine therapy is the only cure to coronavirus because, quote, God has given us everything we need. Piss. In response to his claims, Dr. Anthony Paisan, chief medical toxologist at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, says, quote, don't. Oh, that, that, that's it? I thought, I thought there was gonna be more. Nope, just don't. But he goes on to say, don't drink urine. It's not recommended. You know what? No, that's just what a person concealing the fact that piss is the cure to coronavirus would say. Like, I get the fact that he says it's not recommended or necessary, but I think you're forgetting the fact that it's sterile and I like the taste. And what about this guy and his tons and tons of research he said he's done? And I've been practicing this for 20 years and we have tons and tons of research. You hear that? 20 years. Sounds to me like he's a P expert. Can you say the same Dr. whatever from the University of Who Cares? You think I'm gonna trust you or a guy who drives around the country in a car labeled the vaccine police and who's been arrested for telling random pharmacists in a Walmart that he's gonna execute them? <laughs> <sighs> and by the way, for the record, I just want to say that I am in no way kink shaming anyone. Whatever you want to do with your hot liquids in a safe and secure consensual environment is your own business. But to claim it has magical healing properties is another thing. Speaking of hot liquid, in other anti-mask news, a Vancouver, Canada man was so upset about a Dairy Queen's mask policy that he whipped out his dick and pissed all over the counter. Seems like an adequate reaction. <laughs> And you may be looking at this thinking that this is the antics of an immature little man baby. But knowing what we know now about urine being the cure to coronavirus, it's clear that this man was just trying to cure everyone in the Dairy Queen. <laughs> and with all these news stories and videos, I haven't even come close to showing all of them. I mean, there's at least 20 videos I could show you of people getting kicked off or dragged off of planes because they aren't wearing a mask. Including this guy who wore a pair of women's underwear over his face rather than wearing a mask. Or how about the guy that literally snarled at people when asked to put on a mask. So yes, it's frankly shocking the amount of videos that there are of this, and, and mind you, these are just the ones that are being filmed and covered on news. So that being said, I actually feel like I'm sort of lacking in expertise when it comes to the subject of Karen. So for a more in-depth and concise report, we go now to a special segment by Grayson Alabaster, host of Karen Watch. Enjoy. 
many years I've been tracking the behavior and science of the creatures known as Karens, nothing could have prepared me for the ravenous stampede of aggressive new Karens multiplying across the country at an alarming rate. Behavior which drove me, a once prominent expert in this field to solitude. As for many months now, I have lived alone on an island far removed from the typical places a Karen might frequent. I've survived on this island off of rainwater and hunting and killing rats. Though the taste pales in comparison to my usual diet of Cinnabon, I've admittedly grown accustomed to this succulent rat flesh. The only friends that I've made here other than the shadow puppets to which I've grown quite fond of. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Is the producer of this show an absolute twat named Reginald Sporkby, who visits me on occasion to remind me I'm failing in the most horrific manner, and that his family invented the spork? You are failing in the most horrific manner, and my family invented the spork. Yes, thank you, Reginald. I'm aware. I'm Vince Turtlebloom. I'm the cameraman. I went to film school, and uh, I found myself uh, filming these two British guys argue about what a spork is used for. What if you need me? On your, on I, your no, spork. Look, listen, listen, Reginald, I am done having this conversation. I'm gonna go back to eating a fucking rat, okay? Well, if you, you can use my spork! If, no, no, no! My family made this spork! <sighs> yeah, this is what I have to deal with. Half the price of a spork! Someone save me. Oh, uh, yes, my name is Reginald Sporkby. My family invented the spork. Oh, and I'm definitely allergic to corn. I think it's about time you came back. What do you think of that? No, 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 I can't. Oh. I can't. Could you at least tell me why? You have no idea what I've seen, Reginald! Okay? No idea! You have no fucking idea what I've seen out there, Reginald! Let me know! Though my mental fortitude dwindles by the second, I know being alone on this island is more preferable to the horrors that await just outside it. Well, that is it for this special Karen Watch report. Make sure to join us next week as we delve into the. What the fuck, Grayson? What the fuck is wrong with you? Triple spark attack! Powerful, powerful stuff. But that is it for this episode of What the Fuck News. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to say it out loud so I can hear you say it. I bugged your entire home, so don't worry, I'll hear you. You know, or, or leave a comment, your choice. And uh, it's been a while since I've asked this question, so my question of the day for you guys is what has your experience been uh, with this whole pandemic? Are you alive? Let me know in the comments down below. Or, like I said, just, just yell it out loud so I can hear you because the acoustics in your home are incredible. It's sort of weird that you talk to yourself in the shower, but I won't hold that against you. Yo, can you stop? It's getting kind of weird. Yeah, I would, but you know how long it would take to uninstall the bugs in their homes? A long time. Uh, be sure to also check out the description down below to find all of my links, you know, uh, my, my MySpace. Send me a friend request, put me in your top eight, uh, comment for comment, PC for PC, you know. Uh, you can find my Google+, Plus, my LinkedIn, my My Yearbook, uh, MSN Messenger, AOL Messenger, and of course, my Club Penguin account. You know, just all, all the social media that you kids are using nowadays. <laughs> uh, it's funny, because no one uses those anymore. Yes, thank you, Terry, that was, that was the joke. God, I really hope that guy doesn't come back next time. Rude! Maybe by then I'll have more than negative $2,000 in my account to use as a budget. Uh, honestly though guys, uh, it feels incredible to be back making this show again. Like there were so many other stories that I wanted to cover today from the whole Gwyneth Paltrow goop documentary news, uh, the whole NFT craze thing, but uh, I also didn't want this video to be like an hour long, so next time. Also huge, huge thanks to Adam Neve for sponsoring this video as well as my sponsor to your patrons. Starting with Jamie Ripley who says, everyone enjoy the beef sweats. Yo, I don't know if you can see this, but I did not even need beef to be this sweaty. Next a message from sponsor tier patron Chaos Kitten who says, I was going to put the whole B movie script here, but I'm not that kind of asshole. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, from Depot, who wants all of you to remember, I want you to matter to you. Forget those backstabbers. Not only a wonderful man, but solid advice as well. Remember also, if you'd like to support the channel and sponsor a future video, get some cool shit sent to your two bedroom, one bath apartment with a really nice view, consider joining the Patreon crew over at patreon.com slash But that's it guys, I will see you next time for another What The Fuck News. Thank you guys so much for watching, viewing, supporting this channel, all that good shit. I love you all and fair winds. What I keep wondering, Reginald, is how did you even get here? I mean, honestly, where, where did you come from? All that's out there is a PNG image of a fucking yacht. Is that yours? Yeah, I downloaded it last night. You like it?